Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Mikey, and in today's video, we're gonna have a little conversation about how to grow your vlog channel in 2024. Like most of you who have started a vlog channel or are thinking about starting a vlog channel, I've also watched countless videos from these growth channels regarding how to grow a YouTube channel. I noticed that there was a little bit of a disconnect here in terms of how to grow a vlog channel. A lot of these growth channels talk about just an overall general picture of how to grow a channel. Don't get me wrong, they're very useful and they have a lot of good information in there when they talk about thumbnails, SEOs, titles, algorithm changes, things like that. I to this day still watch them just to see what I can get out of that information. But when it comes to actual growing a vlog channel, they don't really talk about that. A lot of times these creators will say, pick a niche, don't pick a niche, niche down, don't niche down. And it's like, huh? But one thing I notice is not a lot of them will have the balls to talk about growing a vlog channel. And I think that's because they've never done it. There's actually one channel that I follow and it's this channel has hundreds of thousands of views in their YouTube social media growth channel. And then they branched out to start their lifestyle channel. And I believe in about like a year or two years, they're like only at about 3000 or less followers. So when you think about that, you have a massive following here, you're starting a lifestyle channel and your big channel is about growing a channel, the mathy mathing, you know what I mean? And so that's why I decided to make this video because I wanted to have a conversation about how to grow a vlog in 2024. Also, let me preface this by saying that this is about a slow, steady growth versus viral growth or a huge bump in growth, just because I feel like if it was easy to go viral, we would all have viral channels. We would all be Instagram famous. We would all have huge followings, right? Like we have to really take what these content creators are saying with a grain of salt and figure out how to make their knowledge work for us in our vlogging niche. So think of this more as like a conversation between two friends and feel free to comment down below if you have any questions because I'll make sure to reply to you and we can have a conversation going if you have a specific question about something. All right, so with that said, the first thing I wanna talk about is keep improving. And I know time and time again, you've seen videos of people saying, improve your video 1% each time. And for a lot of people and a lot of niches, I think that makes sense. Like if you're creating content like Mr. Beast, every video should be 1% better because you're thinking about the next viral moment or topic or video. You're thinking about how to make it more grand and more explosive and bigger and better. But when it comes to vlogging, we're not really trying to invent the wheel here. We're trying to invent ourselves. And so the first improvement I want to talk about, which I think you can incorporate pretty much today, is to think about shooting your videos in 4K. There was a recent article by YouTube CEO Neil Mohan. And in that article, he shares a key performance indicator regarding a trend that he's seeing in terms of how audiences are consuming their YouTube content. In that article, he shares that on average, 1 billion watch hours are being consumed through televisions every single day. 1 billion watch hours. So that means more people, maybe even families, are watching YouTube content on their television screens in their living rooms or bedroom or wherever they have a TV around the house. So if you're filming your content in 1080p and they're watching it on a 4K television, it's not going to display the best. It will still look pretty good, but it's not going to look as good as it can be if you were to shoot in 4K. Now here's the thing about shooting in 4K though. The cons are the files are going to be bigger and depending on the computer software you are running or the hardware that you're editing with, it might not be able to to keep up with the 4K footage, so you have to keep that in mind. But if you can't shoot in 4K, it's definitely something to think about because your quality and footage is just gonna look a lot sharper and clearer and your vlogs are gonna be just presented in a nicer way. Another improvement I wanted to talk about is think about adding music to your vlogs to help captivate an audience, tell a story, or show a specific emotion that you wanna share. But when you think about movies in a film, it really can play a pivotal role in telling the story, keeping you engaged, or setting an emotion. Music in film is so important. So I want to show you guys two clips. One is going to be without music and then the other one is going to be with music. It's going to be a clip of me going to Trader Joe's, a simple mundane task. What else do we need? Oh, is the cheese. So as you can see from the two clips, the one without music, it's still vlog worthy and still works, but in my opinion, the one with music, it makes a mundane task a little bit more exciting and adventurous, even though it's literally just shopping at Trader Joe's, but it also breaks up your normal style vlogging of just talking to the camera. It gives a audible break from your vlog, and I just think it adds a little bit more character to your vlogs. With that said, it's a perfect time now to talk about today's sponsor, Epidemic Sound. 
always wanted to say that. They're not sponsoring this video. They don't even know about me. But what I really like about Epidemic Sound is their user interface on their website. It makes it really easy to find music, whether you're looking for a certain mood, a genre, they even have playlists from certain creators, which is awesome. They also have sound effects that you can download. So if you are interested in adding music to your vlogs, I'm gonna leave a link down below. It is an affiliate link, which just means if you guys click the link, sign up and do a paid subscription, I'm gonna get like a, I'm gonna say it's like a $17 credit on my account, but it is also a seven day trial. So if you wanted to just try it out, you can do that as well. The cool thing about their trial though is if you are within their trial period, use their music and upload your video, you'll be free from any copyright issues. Aside from Epidemic Sound, there's also Artlist, which I used in the past and also still continue to use just because I did a year subscription with them. So I still have access to their music catalog as well. But I think when that ends, I might stick to just Epidemic Sound simply because I like their UI better and it makes finding music a lot easier and quicker because I really pay attention to the music choices that I make. For me, it's kind of fun too because it's almost like another way to be creative. Another way you can improve is think about using B-roll in your vlogs. I know B-roll might sound scary, it might sound like a filmmaker term, but essentially what B-roll is, is just another camera shooting you at a different angle or a different focal length. You're able to interlace this footage to create a more captivating and engaging video, and so it's not all just static. And oftentimes you'll see me add B-roll like I am in this video to kind of help break things up visually, keep you engaged, stuff like that. And the last thing I wanna say about improving is think about improving yourself. Think about taking the steps to be a better version of you. Because the better you feel about yourself, the more it will show on camera. And the more confident you are on camera, your personality will shine through and the more authentic you'll be. And honestly too, the improvements that you're making off camera to be better on camera will just make you a better human in general. So it's a win-win in my book. So just to recap, some of the things you can do to improve is one, maybe think about shooting in 4K for a clearer, crisper image. Think about people who are watching your content on larger TV screens. Two, think about music as a storytelling tool versus just background elevator music. Though I will say most of my videos do have music in the background when I'm talking, but I also am starting to venture out and using music really as a storytelling tool. Three, think about B-roll footage and how that helps tell a story or maybe makes a segment a little bit more engaging than your normal selfie sort of vlog footage. And four, think about continuing to strive to be a better version of yourself because I really think it will translate well on camera. The next thing I want to talk about is finding out ways to use trending content to your advantage. And trending content can be products, it could be an idea that you see, it could be short form, long form. To give you an idea about an example of this is my channel didn't really start to gain a momentum until I started to take a camera that was coming out and put it through its paces of vlogging. Because a lot of times companies will market a camera as a vlogging camera. And so these tech creators on YouTube will take the camera, they'll do a review on it, and then they'll have like a short two minute segment on vlogging with it when really it's hard to really get an idea of what that would look like for your content. So the key points here, it's trending because it's a new camera release, it's searchable, and also I'm having a lot more time with it than a tech creator will have because I'm doing a full-on weekly vlog with it. Another example about taking trending content is my current most viewed video right now about how YouTube changed my life. What if I told you YouTube changed my life as a 40-year-old nobody going through grief, a possible midlife crisis, and feeling a bit lost about what the future holds? I've seen so many of these videos throughout the years and so I wanted to do my take on it. As I was thinking about doing the video, I really wanted to tie it into my vlog because that's my main channel is vlogging. One thing I didn't want to do is have a video do well, but then it didn't tie back to my vlogging. And so you might have these new subscribers who might think you're an advice channel. So they might subscribe, but then you start posting vlogs and they're not watching it. So that could end up hurting your channel. So you want to make sure to take these trending topics, but still tie them into vlogging. Otherwise you might be doing yourself more damage than good. Case in point, this video I'm talking about how to grow a vlog in 2024 but I'm making sure to point out that it's coming from an actual vlogger so when you take this trending content you have to figure out how to tie it back into your vlogs because you want to convert that viewer into a subscriber who will then watch your vlog content in marketing that's kind of what we call a customer's journey at the end of the journey you want to convert a sale into advocacy an example is let's just say you're opening up a coffee shop and someone goes in there buys a coffee your customer service is amazing the coffee is so good they're gonna go and post on Instagram and be like, oh, new coffee shop, delicious coffee. They're advocating for you. So 
conversion, advocacy, getting a subscriber to watch your vlogs. So when you're thinking about tying in trending content, you wanna have that in mind. And then finally, just some last few things I wanna talk about to help grow your vlog in 2024 is you wanna engage with your community. Without your community, there is no social media. I love when I upload a video and my community is so supportive and loving. I really genuinely are excited to see what they say. I love engaging with them. Definitely engage and build a community because at the end of the day, they're the ones who are supporting you and your channel. Also, I just wanna point out, you have to like vlogs. In my opinion, you have to like vlogs, you have to like watching vlogs, and you have to be subscribed to vloggers. It's almost like if you're trying to be a basketball player, but don't like basketball, don't watch basketball. How do you expect to be successful as a basketball player? Or let's just take that coffee shop example. If you're trying to open a coffee shop, but you don't drink coffee, you don't care about the process of making good coffee, are you gonna be a good business entrepreneur in the coffee segment? So if you wanna be a vlogger, you have to be all in. Because if you don't like watching vlogs, you might wanna think about picking a different niche. So I hope these talking points have been somewhat of a value for you. I mean, I just wanna to reiterate too that you can't just take these things, put them in your vlog, and then you think you're gonna gain followers. I think it's just like a not one size fits all kind of thing. You just have to experiment and see what works for you. And honestly, these are just thoughts I wanted to share with you guys because prior to implementing these in my own vlogs, I was probably gaining, I wanna say, negative one to maybe four subscribers a day. And on average, in the last six months, I've probably been seeing about 30 followers a day. So that's pretty good going from negative one and finally, just like a bonus little thought um, that I want to share with you guys that kind of piggybacks off you should be watching vlogs is you should be watching them and you should be gaining some inspiration from them, but you shouldn't be copying them. And I say that because I tried to do that in the beginning of my vlog journey. You know, I follow a lot of vlogs who are like more on the upbeat side as well. And they have all these crazy edits and like boom, boom, pow, like graphics text popping out, edits here and there, and kind of tried to incorporate a little bit of that in my earlier vlogs, and I just realized that that wasn't really me. I wasn't really being authentic. I'm more in a chill sort of vibe, and so if I was trying to implement those crazy edits, it just didn't translate well to my vlogs, and I could see that. I look back at some of them, I'm like, oh my gosh, mm, no. So just be mindful about taking inspiration versus copying because at the end of the day, you wanna be authentic to yourself and to your viewers. All right, with that said, that's gonna be the end of this video. As always, thank you guys so much for watching and if you can, try to choose happy over Saturday and I'll catch you in the next video. Bye everyone. Boop. Thumbnail.